Well, hello there, my dear children of the apocalypse. How are we doing today? Welcome back to our 52 weeks of self-improvement in 2023, and welcome to a video about religion. I want to start things off by explaining that throughout my childhood, I was a atheist. And then something happened which turned me into an agnostic. And to explain the difference between a agnostic and an atheist, the way that I understand it is this. Atheist doesn't believe in God. An agnostic doesn't believe that a God could even exist. Therefore, there's nothing to believe in. This all relates to my granddad. Uh, I lost my granddad just under two years ago, and he was my favorite person in the world. Something about this man, his journey, his story, his hardships, all the adversities he had to go through to give me and um, my cousins and, and, and my, my parents at the end of the day a quality life, it, it, really, it really gets to me. And the story of my granddad is that he grew up in a, I believe, a family of nine in, in the middle of nowhere and had to really make his way to our country and, and build up a life and, and build up everything, his career, uh, learn the language, you know, find himself a, a good quality wife and, and have two kids of his own. And when he retired, he was, within I think a year or two, hit by a stroke and it left him in this state of not being able to really walk much, not being able to talk much, it took away that third stage of life from him. He had worked so hard through his entire life to get to that state where he's a granddad, he can watch his grandchildren grow and, and ride their bike, and, and, and it, it tore my heart out that out of, you know, it's like, if God is real, how can he allow such monstrosities to happen? And it, it got me angry. It got me cursing at, at the Almighty. I, I started to first hate this entity, hate the idea that there could be someone so majestic, so almighty, so powerful, and yet so incompetent as to not try to do better for people, to not try to be just. And I went through that phase and, and, and I, I began to be more agnostic. I started to sort of remove him from my life, uh, saying, I'm going to just live. It's just me. I'm the entity. I'm my own God. Screw everything else. And it was going well. But life kept testing me. Life kept giving me good things and bad things. And life kept prompting me with, clearly, hardships of my own kind. And I kept making mistakes. I kept fumbling. I kept screwing up, I kept falling. And then something happened last year, you know, so many different circumstances that I'm not going to go into, so many little tiny things, which, clever coincidences, um, signs, visions, if you will, that it got me thinking, am I really a, a spiritual person? Am I really somebody who doesn't believe in any of that? Because in most of these videos, I've spoken about energy, I've spoken about belief, I've spoken about, you know, believing into things, and, and it will turn out into reality. Now, some of you might look at that and think that's mumbo jumbo, that's wishful thinking, but I think there's something more to it. I've always envied people who are very religious, because very religious people have a belief, a very core belief. It comes with obviously negatives, or we should say, it comes with some shortcomings. You know, within certain religions, there are stuff you're not supposed to eat, things you're not supposed to say, actions that you have to perform, actions that you're not supposed to perform. There's rules and regulations, and but a lot of that is religion specific. But if you're just believing, then you're not bound to by religion. I mean, you could believe in God, or you can believe in your granddad, or you could believe in love, you know, you could believe in yourself, you can believe in your cat, you can believe in whatever it is that you create. You could make your own religion if you wanted to. But I've learned is that I've become deeply spiritual. And what it's allowed me to do is to take some of the stress that I feel from an individual that is, I have a little bit of Obsessive compulsive disorder for sure, a little bit of ADHD probably. I'm very controlling, I'm very obsessive, uh, I'm a perfectionist. 
I want everything to be just tippy-toppy the way that I see it. And when the world doesn't bound to these ideologies that I have, then I feel like I'm slumping and things are not going my way and there's no future and it all becomes sort of desperate, agonizing. And it's ignorant and it's not a happy place. And when I started offloading this, I tested it. Every week or two, I would take some of that pain that I felt, or maybe it was love, or maybe it was, um, you know, hatred, or maybe it was fear, and I would just take some of it away and give it out there. To give an example, I, I love somebody at the moment, and this person is not available for me. I don't believe I deserve this individual. And I could go head over heels. I could contact this person, I could uh, harass this person, I could find ways to manipulate them into wanting to be with me. But I found it better to just come to terms with the fact that, okay, you feel this for this person or this entity or this thing, and that's okay, and just let it be. And if it's meant, then it will happen. And I've started using that same principle for everything else. To give you a direct example, there is a person in the world right now that I am in love with, and this person is not available for me. Uh, due to various circumstances, it just simply hasn't worked out. And what I could do is I could chase this person. I could go ruthlessly after them and manipulate them, or I could try to persuade them, or I could try to, um, you know, almost hurt them in a way just to just to get my way. But no, I realized that I've come to terms with my emotions, with my feelings, with and become content with it, and have given it into the universe for it to sort of figure out its own thing. If it's meant to be, it will return. If it's meant to be, our paths will cross again. These things I wholeheartedly believe in, it will be a surprise, and it will be joyful, and it will be beautiful. And if it doesn't happen, it's just equally as fine. I look at life one day at a time, not anymore in the sense of carpe diem, but in the sense of backward, you know, look at what has what has happened, look at all the beauty that you've gone through. Look at the fact that it's so unlikely that you and me are even here alive today, and that any of this works and we're interconnected through a camera and a microphone. And this is what makes life beautiful. And I feel like people who are deeply religious live happier and more content lives. Obviously it's not for everybody. I don't think that you should run in there and try to get, you know, your first religion that exists. I think you should be able to craft your own belief system. I think religion is in here and in here. And what you believe in can be anything. You're not limited to what entity or what way. This is why I love when I was reading Marcus Aurelius, because he speaks of the universe. He doesn't mention God. He doesn't mention specific names. or He just simply says, universe with a capital letter u because we're all part of one giant cosmic thing and i do believe in something there is some energy out there there is something that has to happen with the soul or, or whatever it might be i haven't cracked the clue not even in the slightest i have no no i can't even fathom i think how complex and intertwined and deep this must be but being a person that likes to simplify things I think of it in the sense that there's energy that we carry with us that will go from the day we're born to the day we die, and that this energy has to be distributed around the world. And if you're able to come to terms, especially with your emotions, and as a man, with your ego, if you can leave the ego boy somewhere in the past, sitting on a bench, he'll stay there. And the best part is that within a couple of years, You'll walk by and you'll meet that person again. And you'll see just how much you've changed, but also he's changed. He's starting to think about it. I almost feel like we're altering the past as we're going through the future with our vision focused forward, with our goals, aspirations, with clarity, with passion, with contentment, with belief, with love. I don't think this video has a sense to it. I don't think it has a guide. I don't think it's a tip because I don't, I don't understand how I could ever, as a person who's gone through so many phases of belief, from not believing to hating to completely distancing myself from the concept of religion, 
to re-entering it, but in my own way. Because I think there is something beautiful to it. And I think society, whether or not you believe it, or look at it as a positive or a negative thing, wouldn't have come this far if it wasn't for religion. It also wouldn't have gone through a lot of the hardships if it wasn't for religion. But it's one of those things that it comes with pluses, it comes with minuses, and such is every decision you make in life. Every left turn you make, every door you open, there's always something that happens. There's always some weird energy-based Newton law that occurs. And I think we have to take that and love it unconditionally. And I do this and I say this because I believe that if we live life and remind ourselves daily that life is beautiful, that we have food to eat, that we have clothes on our back, that we have activities to partake on, that we have clean air to breathe, that we have you know, love to share, experiences to make, then every day becomes really, really beautiful. And I think if we all lived that way, the world would be just a tiny little bit less empty, less miserable, and more fulfilling. But maybe I'm wrong. Let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. Until next time, take care and uh, safe flying.